Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing a five minute game and I'm going to try to win this one. I really want to win this one because this might be my last video for the year. We got another Grunfeld. I'm going to go Bishop D2 again. I just posted the game uh, where I played this against Artemeyev. Okay, this was the line that I thought was normal. <laughs> Keyword thought. In the previous game, he played an earlier knight b6 before playing bishop g7. So I just wanted to say thank you guys for tuning into my channel. I've only been doing this for um, honestly a few months, posting videos regularly. But um, I've been pretty overwhelmed with the feedback I'm getting. Just overwhelmingly positive feedback from my subscribers and viewers. So thank you guys so much. I've had a lot of fun doing this and uh, I hope to continue to do it in 2015. I'm not going to slow down in any regards. So if you want to, feel free to leave me some comments about what you'd like to see on the channel in 2015. Because uh, I'm always looking for feedback. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about what I'm doing right, what I can improve on. I'm going to give them a check here. Check. Because um, I make these videos for you guys and also because I enjoy it. So if you have something you'd like to see me do, um, I'm planning on branching out with some of the content, maybe doing like more instructional series. Um, let's play Bishop E2 in this position, by the way. Um, maybe doing more of my game review for over the board games. People have been asking for that quite frequently. So yeah, let me know what you guys want to see, what you'd like to see on my channel in the coming year. I played b3 just to stop him from coming to c4, making use of that square. He's going to advance to a4. That, that seems smart, because that's an undermining move. I'm going to castle. It's probably high time I castled. I will have to figure out what to do after a4. I could take it. He takes with his knight. Eh, I'm not sure about that. Let's take it, though. Because I can jump into b5, or I might be able to um, might be able to jump into d5 as an option. Maybe he won't recapture. Maybe he'll put something on c4 or play a move like queen b4. Plays knight b4. Threatening to come into c2. Okay. Hmm. Rook c1. What's up with rook c1? Or knight d4. Knight d4 is sensible. Because then I would attack his bishop. I don't know, but he just goes knight c2 anyways. Let's go rook fc1. How about that? That seems like a good compromise. Because then I can keep two pieces defending a2. Uh-huh, he does that. I'd say take is probably my best bet. Really want to exploit the c7 square. Knight d4, bishop b5, pawn a3. Let's go knight d4. Threatening some fun stuff. Namely, rook takes c7 or knight takes e6. He'll probably play bishop f7, I'm guessing. That's what I would do if I was him. Hmm. Plays c6. So shutting down my uh, pressure on c7. Okay. Well, I'm going to get rid of this, Check. this bishop. And now, what about a3? a3 or bishop c4? A3, he can maybe pin me with rook fc8, rook fa8, I mean. Let's go bishop c4. Attack his queen. Because I want to put this bishop on b3. I think that would be a strong diagonal. Also would threaten his rook. So he goes queen e5. Should I back him off? No, let's play bishop b3 first. 
Let's attack his rook. I want to save f4. I'm not sure I want to play f4. He could go rook a3. But I was thinking perhaps queen b6, because his knight will be loose and so will the pawn on b7. Queen b6 looks dangerous for him. Yeah. Ah, he has queen e7. Okay. Forgot about that move. Bishop c4. Yeah. I want to go a3. Kick his knight away. Hmm. His knight is not stable, but I haven't done a good a job so far of exploiting its position. I think I'm better here. Like I like uh, my activity and my pressure on his b7 pawn, but it's nothing tangible yet. Rook a b1 could come, because then if he takes on a2, maybe I have rook c2, and his knight is on the verge of being trapped. So I have options like that in the air. He's spending a lot of time. F5, wow. Wasn't expecting that. Is he fighting for the d5 square with that move? Well, first thing I'm going to do is play rook here. Yeah, just to see what he does with his knight. He takes. Okay, on takes, I think I actually can just play this move. Check. Yeah, give him a check. And pick up his knight. He's going to win e4, but other than that, let's just go here. I'm threatening b7. Okay, this ooh, doesn't quite win his rook. Almost does. Check. Give a check. He has to block with his queen now, I think. Otherwise, I pick up his rook. Check. So I'll do that, and then I'll take this guy. He pins me, but I can come back. So now it should be a matter of collecting his loose pawns. Check. Yeah. Just collecting his loose pawns. He can't defend them all. Yeah, and this is going to be decisive soon. Provided I can win this endgame. <laughs> Which would be embarrassing if I could not. But yeah, there's very little chance of me not winning this endgame. Especially given the time. So he resigned. Um, okay, so this one, like I said, was very similar to the last game. Same line, this bishop d2 variation. The Grunfeld is a tough opening. In my chess career with d4, I've always had a hard time finding a good line against the Grunfeld, as I think a lot of d4 players have struggled because uh, it's such a robust defense for black. And my strategy has just been to choose a variety of different weapons. You know, I've played almost everything against it, like e4 um, in this position, the main line. I've also played knight f3 or bishop g5 in this position, even moves like e3, all sorts of stuff. So bishop d2 is one weapon I've used quite a bit, actually, in, in tournament play. So e4. I had one game that went knight takes c3, bishop takes c3, c5. d5, bishop Check. takes c3, pawn takes, and then castle. And I think white gets a small edge out of this. Nothing huge. But uh, the knight b6 move is more ambitious, where black keep piece, keeps pieces on the board and tries to counterattack white's center. So I just defended. 
I think h3 is useful because it stops bishop g4. Like, I want to go knight f3, but I don't really want to have to deal with bishop g4. So I, I, I sort of feel like this position is slightly in white's favor. Very slightly. I think it's nice to have one pawn in the middle, one center pawn compared to his none. Check. He's weakened his king a bit. I'm just curious like what the engine eval is around here, but I thought I was maybe a tiny bit better. A5, A4 is a good plan. Yeah, engine agrees, like very small edge to white. So he shoves the A pawn. I take, I think if I don't take, I'm just liable to get uh, some structural issues going because I mean, if I play like rook AB1, he takes, takes, now this pawn's a sitting duck and I'm inviting him to infiltrate and start hammering it. Something along those lines. So I take, he takes, or no, I'm sorry, he did not take, he played knight into b4. I was happy with rook fc1. This rook, I keep defending a2 and maybe I can deploy it to b1 in the future. Takes here. Round about here, it's, it's, it's likely I have something better than what I did because I played knight d4, but c6 was good. And then I felt like um, it wasn't easy to get past these two pawns on b7 and c6. So I wonder if I had something better than knight d4. Computer suggests playing a3 right away. What about back a few moves? Hmm, it says if I'm gonna play knight d4, I should do it in this position. Did I think about that? Maybe not. That does cover c2. So the timing is uh, just superior, it seems, on this move. Hmm. C6. Wow, it actually really doesn't like C6. Suggests he just play bishop f7. That was the move I was predicting he'd play. Huh. C6, bishop d1 is strong for white. Why? Okay, so if his rook moves, I guess we're going... Check. Take, take, a3. It thinks this is awesome for white. This is somewhat similar to the game. Knight a6, rook a b1, and I have pressure against his pawns. Okay. It's giving a, light, a nice line where I get my queen in pretty deep in his position to b6 or a7 even. Hmm. So after knight d4, c6, Check. I had that strong possibility, but I didn't play it. Okay, kind of likes the way I did it too. This bishop d1 move, hmm. yeah, I didn't think about that. That's a, a more efficient way to get the bishop to b3, I suppose. And also enable me to play a3 soon. I mean, I could play a3 here, right? But bishop d1 is apparently good. Knocks him off balance a little bit. So here I played, what, rook a b1? No, I played bishop b3. Okay. Sorry, my ICC is lagging a little bit. Um, bishop b3, rook a8, queen in. Mm-hmm. I miss that he could go to d3 with this knight. Engine advocates that move. He played back. I went bishop c4. Okay, that seems like a good idea. Preparing rook a b1. So it really hated f5 for him. That was a bid for counterplay down the file, but yikes, it did not like that move at all. It is a tough position for him to play. If his knight was more stable, I think that's the key here. If his knight was on a stable square, he might be okay. But as it stands, the future of this knight is uncertain. F5. Yeah, and that was a, check. a big mistake because of check. I guess queen takes b7 is also good too. Because if this, check. let's say the king runs, I have this move at the end, also trapping the knight. Mm -hmm. Check. But I think this was good enough. Check. 
yeah, Check. this was sufficient. And just so long as I don't allow him to coordinate with his two rooks. Check. It's an easy win for white. Yeah, you guys saw the rest. Okay, well, I'm glad I was able to end 2014 on a winning note. And like I said, if you have any thoughts about the channel or where you'd like to see this going in the coming year, please let me know. And thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys have a happy new year. Bye.